guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're gonna be reviewing this all new 2023 Kia Sportage LX. And before we start, I wanna give a huge thank you to Darius and the rest of the management and staff here at Regal Kia in Lakeland, Florida for making this review possible. These guys are awesome. I'll leave a link to their inventory below. And if you're in Florida looking for a new car, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Darius. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Sportage has been Kia's compact SUV since 1993. That's when the first generation was released. It was brought to America for 1995. And fast forward to 2023, we have the all new fifth generation Kia Sportage. Here we have the LX trim level. We already reviewed the X line. The LX is the complete base model, cheapest way to get into a Kia Sportage. And here we have the all wheel drive version. So the cheapest way to get an all wheel drive Kia Sportage starting around 27,000 bucks. Let's see what we get. So up front, you notice this really beautiful gray metallic paint color, daytime running lights, full LED headlamps too. I'm really liking this metallic gray. As you see, it pops really nicely in this Florida sun. But you notice your Hyundai Sonata inspired Daytime running strip, really liking how it looks on this 2023 Sportage. Updated Kia badge, no shiny chrome up front, little flat trim for this area. Looks like a nice aluminum, but it's just plastic. Black grill area, no front parking sensors, wouldn't be expected with a base LX trim. But you can see, pretty nice size opening for your radiator for this nice 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine. As far as this wheel and tire setup, pretty impressive for just the base trim. I'm really liking the design of the 17 inch rims, the black and aluminum looking contrast. Wrapped in next gen Rodian all season tires, dimensions 235, 65 R17s. Pretty impressed, a little bit of plastic cladding surrounding the wheel well for this front wheel drive based SUV. We have all wheel drive here. So if you plan on taking this vehicle off road, it's gonna be a much more stable, but the plastic cladding is nice if you just go with the front wheel drive. Plastic cladding for the rocker panel and the rear area, carrying along all the way out to your rear diffuser. Same wheel and tire setup out rear. The only difference is just a smaller brake caliper. No smart access, no intelligent access for either door. And we have a turnkey, old school, old school for this base, 2023 Sportage LX. All wheel drive, you guys can take a look at the window sticker. Standard features, of course, two and a half liter direct injection, four cylinder, eight speed auto transmission. That's nice considering most of this segment has a CVT. But this vehicle has a similar setup to what the Toyota RAV4 has. Drive mode select, all wheel drive with a center locking rear dip or center locking differential, electronic parking brake with auto hold. Ton of advanced safety features. We get forward collision avoidance, lane departure warning, lane keeping assist, driver attention warning, leading vehicle departure alert, parking distance warning for the reverse, all standard on a $25,000 base price Sportage LX. Safety features, you can pause interior, includes this eight inch audio touchscreen, rear view camera, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, air conditioning, rear vents, no auto climate, just manual climate, but I personally use manual climate even in cars with auto climate, so not a big deal for me. Remote keyless entry and alarm system uh, by keyless entry. There isn't even anywhere to put a key unless this cap over here removes. Anyway, guys, we also get heated front seats. That's a nice feature. 17 inch alloys, LED headlights, taillights, and daytime running lights, heated outside mirrors, standard. Only options on this all wheel drive Sportage LX with all wheel drive, we start right below 28,000 are these $155 carpeted floor mats, $1,200 destination charge brings us to 29,000 bucks. Pretty decent value for a base model, 25 MPGs, 23 city, 28 highway, not too bad on gas either for an all wheel drive SUV. I'm liking that aluminum trim out rear, the little bit of chrome surrounding your window trim, but it's not a shiny chrome. It's like an aluminized look. Not quite sure if you can pick it up on camera, but really digging the styling on this new 2023 Sportage. Of course, we already reviewed the X-Line trim, but this vehicle has a very similar theme to it. LED taillights, uh, turn signal, and your reverse light right underneath. Parking sensors out rear, huge thumbs up for a base model to be equipped with parking sensors. The rear diffuser area has a nice aluminum looking look to it. Updated Kia badge and your 4X badge right in your lower right corner. I'm liking how the rear wipers also integrated nicely with the spoiler Kia and Hyundai have been killing it with that design. But we'll take a squat right back here, start this 2023 Sportage up and hear how this 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder sounds. Right, guys that was of course the sound of the two and a half liter four cylinder sold by kia for the 2023 sportage as soon as we figure out this latch we can pop it right up no struts unfortunately gonna have to deal with the prop rod which is located on the left side of this engine bay we'll set it up right here but here you have it your gasoline direct injection four cylinder two and a half liter engine making 187 horsepower 
178 pound-feet of torque, enough to get this all-wheel drive SUV to 60 between eight and a half and nine seconds. So definitely not the quickest by any means, but it's still nice to get all-wheel drive for a compact vehicle in this segment. We get an aluminum stick connecting the two strut towers, which should aid the handling quite a bit. The batteries on the driver's side, not the biggest deal since the motor seems to be pushed pretty well to the left. But what you see is basically what we get. We can take care of this prop rod real quick. Shut this hood and it actually fell on the first try. Remember on the last Sportage x line we reviewed, it took me a couple tries because it does take quite a bit of effort to close that hood. But I hope you can pick up the front styling, especially with those beautiful daytime running lights. As far as the interior on this base LX Sportage, let's see what we get. Well, before we do that, check out these mirrors. I know we haven't mentioned that yet. Their body color, no LED turn signal on the glass and the glass has no blind spot monitoring on it, but still a really large piece of glass should really help you see what's in your blind spots. As far as the interior of the 2023 Sportage LX, everything's hard plastic, guys. There is no padding on this door panel. One of the biggest thumbs down in a long time because for $28,000, that's not a cheap car. A cheap car is like fifteen dollars to 20000 Then I would excuse the fact that there's no soft materials. But like the Ford Maverick starts at twenty dollars and we get a soft armrest in that truck. So Kia, it'll be nice to get a soft armrest at least for the 2023 Sportage LX. At least we get an Auto One Touch for the driver, no Auto One Touch for the other passengers, and it's only Auto One Touch for the way down. You gotta hold it for the way back up. Four-way adjustable mirrors, nice chrome aluminum grab handle, decent storage too, one of your six speakers. Not the best sounding audio system. I know a lot of you guys may think it sounds better than the RAV4. I personally think the RAV4 has a better sounding audio system. Other than that though, the seats, full cloth, no adjustability, they're all manual adjustments, but it's a base model, it's to be expected. The seats themselves, very comfortable, nice and soft in the center. As far as this interior itself, what I am impressed with are these dual screens. We'll turn this air down by a couple so you guys can hear a little bit better. But these dual screens, same exact heads up screen as from the X-Line that we reviewed. You got your speed gauge on the left side and an RPM tack on the right. Fuel level on the left, lower left corner, coolant temperature in the lower right corner as far as the adjustments not a lot drive info sense refueling accumulated info and your auto stop user settings tire pressure which you have to be driving to see the tension level and that's about it but my personal preference is just to look at these advanced safety settings at all times we do get auto headlamps which is nice obviously no rain sensing wipers not a biggest deal though because this vehicle again starts at a relatively low price the steering wheel controls include volume skip voice commands mode am fm and sirius call settings favorites you can adjust that infotainment that we just did with this button cruise control active steering and lane keep assist that's an impressive feature you can pause and go back with these buttons to the left of the steering wheel interior brightness trash control electronic parking brake and a pretty nice aluminum looking trim i am a huge fan of the look of this interior the dashboard soft touch like kia what are we doing why is the dashboard soft touch but the entire door panel is hard plastic not quite sure what they were going for with that hopefully they're not mad at me for pointing that out but i'm almost mad at them for having a soft dashboard and a hard door panel but anyway down here fuse box hood release on the lower left corner and you can get a good look at your pedals tilt and telescoping steering wheel the steering wheel is also not leather wrapped wouldn't really be expected for a base lx trim it still feels great in your hands Kia and Hyundai have been killing it with their steering wheels. Thumbs up for that. The dual screens, I'm also impressed with this little touch screen here. No navigation or anything, but as far as like the home screen, we have the radio, media, favorites, volume adjustments, Seek, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, just about everything you'd ever need to see. Beneath that, we have our air vents, more of that aluminum looking trim. No auto climate control, not the biggest deal in my opinion. Beneath that, 12 volt USB and USB-C, no wireless charger or anything like that. Gear selector controls your eight-speed auto transmission. No paddle shifters, manual shift controls are right here in the improper directions. You can downshift and upshift. The rear view camera, let's check it out. Pretty good resolution actually for a base model, better than Toyota. And the trajectory and guidance lines are appreciated too compared to the base Toyotas. Heated seats for the front, cup holders, you guys can see. You can fold them away simply by just folding them away. And then you can press these buttons, boom and they pop right out. And you got more storage behind it. Pretty impressive when it comes to storage. Locking center diff for the four wheel drive, hill descent control, auto hold, auto start stop, which we can disable for this review. But you can turn off your parking sensors and you can also take a look at your rear view camera at all times. We'll put it back in the park. I didn't realize we were still in reverse, but you can press this button and it directs you right back into your rear view camera. Press it one more time and it disappears. Pretty soft Syntex 
faux leather armrest definitely a fan of that huge thumbs up for the soft armrest on the center console we open it up pretty decent when it comes to space i would expect you to fit at least five or six 12 ounce cans with no issues the glove box we can pop it up pretty large damp not allowing felt you can probably fit around 20 license plates pretty impressive as we mentioned the dashboard is soft touch plastic which is nice but it would have been nicer if they left the dashboard hard and just gave us like a nice soft armrest on the door panel. But I'm done gonna, I'm done bashing the door panel, guys. I'm, I am liking the layout of this interior with the air vents flowing really flushly with these dual screens. I do think that on the mid and higher trims, the Sportage is a fantastic compact SUV. And even for the base model here, 28,000 with all wheel drive, I guess you can forgive a little bit of hard plastic on the door panel. I'm sure aftermarket, they have like little tool kits where you can get some nice padding material to put on here that's about it though for this front seat guys frameless mirror it's not auto dimming of course the latch to dim it is back there no moonroof or anything like that interior lighting right here not led that's about it though for this front seat guys let's check out the back real quick see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the materials all right guys step in the back seat of the 2022 sportage lx before we do so actually i am liking that blacked out antenna i know that's kind of a weird thing to notice but anyway whole door panel is hard plastic just like the front nice chrome aluminum door handle with your speaker decent amount of storage you can probably get a 12 ounce bottle in there the seats still all cloth pretty soft materials um yeah what you see is basically what you get we could take a step inside i'm six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and this is actually impressive i have a decent amount of legroom and these rear seats recline really really nicely as you see quite a bit so you can almost lay down back here you have a ton of space for your legs this is the this is might be the best in class rear seat space and comfort. That's what this car is all about. You're not really so much about driver comfort, especially for a base model, but the rear passengers are gonna really like this 2023 Sportage. Interior lighting includes non-LED interior light, map pockets behind both of the front seats, air vents on a base model sportage. Huge thumbs up to Kia for that. A little bit of storage beneath and a center cubby with a string. We can open it up pretty soft. Two cup holders with a pass through, good spot for a phone. That's about it though for this second row, guys. Let's check out the trunk real quick and then take this car out for a drive. All right, guys, step into the trunk of the 2023 Sportage. It's not an auto opening tailgate, wouldn't be expected for a base model, but absolutely massive. This has a class lead in cargo capacity, really low floor. Check it out. My knee, I'm about six feet tall, a little over six feet tall, and my knees right around the same level as the rear hatch area. Really large opening. You fold those rear seats down 60, 40 split. I'd expect you to fit between a 70 to 80 inch TV. Really, really large cargo space. A little bit of secret storage back here. Spare tire or donut kit. Should help in emergency situations and you can probably fit some secret stuff outside of it. 12 volt right out here. I like how the wheel well has these little openings so you can fit some golf bags back here without having to make them diagonal. But again, what you see is basically what you get. You can fold the rear seats down with these latches back here. And to shut this trunk, you just give it the old drop. But well, let's take this 2023 Kia Sportage LX 4X out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2023 Kia Sportage LX 4X. Let's take it out for a drive. The first thing I notice is with this two and a half liter naturally aspirated motor, we have a great throttle response. As soon as you start leaning into that gas pedal, you just start moving and stepping out to this highway about half throttle good throttle response but the mid-range kind of weak once you cross 4,000 we're picking up speed very well it feels really strong once you get into the power band and just cruising along no dual pane windows wouldn't really be expected with a $25,000 Kia Sportage but just cruising around 50 road noise is quiet wind noise is also very very quiet We'll take a step out onto this little back road. I'll throw in the POV camera. We'll step over a set of train tracks, really see how this vehicle's suspension is. And I'll catch back with you in one sec. But all right guys, stepping out here in the Sportage LX, the steering feels surprisingly direct. Kia's been really killing it with their steerings lately. It feels strong, wow. And it's such a smooth ride that you look down, you're going way faster than you think you are. Wow, the handling is actually surprisingly surprisingly sharp guys really impressed i wasn't expecting it to drive that well we do have different drive modes we are currently in just normal mode we can transition into sport as soon as we clear away from the school zone and i'll catch back with you in one second all right guys it looks like we're all good we can take it out of normal throw it into sport 
into the, the, the big horsepower mode, come to a complete stop, and on the gas. Ooh, pretty good. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. I said 0 to 60 between 8.5 to 9. It might be in the lower 8 second range, actually. It felt pretty strong. Steering feels great, for an SUV at least. Half throttle. Eh. It gets up there in speed. It doesn't have to be faster than that for daily driving on the brakes. Brakes feel nice. Steering feels excellent. Body roll basically non-existent for an SUV. Yeah. This thing's nice. I'm liking it. We'll try out the manual shift modes once we turn around. But in the meantime, we can throw it back into normal mode. Take a step out onto this little concrete paved road, which may have a little bit more road noise. But the torque feels great. Very good gas pedal tuning. These Nexon tires do an absolutely great job keeping the road noise out of the cabin too. Quieter than the Stinger. Definitely quieter than the Stinger we just reviewed. I'm impressed guys. Definitely a huge thumbs up to Kia. They knocked it out of the park with this 2022, three, 2023 Sportage. My only complaint, and to me it's a big complaint. I'm, I don't know if it's a big complaint to you guys. Is We should have somewhat of a padded armrest but if that's my only complaint with this suv might as well just go with like higher trim get the nice quality materials like we had in the x-line that we reviewed in this channel turning radius very good excellent turning radius and just regular gas pedal about a sixth throttle going to about 2000 rpm the torque feels good in this car real good All right guys we can throw our back into sport try out these manual shift controls throw in the first gear Starting off, first gear, only guess. Ooh. Yeah, this thing is a lot quicker than I thought it would be. I said eight and a half to nine seconds. There is no way it's quicker than that. Nice little downshift. Feels good. Ooh, we're going to have to push it a whole lot farther than that. Throw it back into normal mode. Oh wow, that actually surprised me how sporty this thing became while throwing the sport. I really was not expecting that. For example, like the we reviewed a Kia Soul on this channel, and like normal sport really didn't make much of a difference, and I was kind of expecting the same to be said about this, but it's just not the case. Sport mode actually livens this car up noticeably. And just cruising along, still really quiet interior with just single pane windows. The isolation from the road is excellent. We have some pretty fat all-season tires in this car. And not only do they do, do, they do, do they do a great job keeping the bumps away, but even through the turns over here, it keeps the body roll really, really low. Very planted feeling SUV. Taking a step out onto this multiple lane highway train tracks. Super smooth. One more time on the gas. Ooh. Get to highway speeds pretty quickly. And just cruising along at around highway speeds. You hear a tiny bit of wind noise, but really nothing unbearable. Super, super quiet interior, even for a car with single pane windows. All in all, I'm really impressed with the Sportage. I was impressed with the X-Line, of course. However, if you're in the market for one, I would recommend paying a little bit extra and just go for the EX. The EX is gonna have the soft touch materials where you want them. This is just the bare, bare bones Sportage. Check out the aftermarket parts though. If you can go on Amazon, maybe get some nice like pockets, soft touch pockets for the armrest. Maybe it's worth it to go with the LX if you can just pay like a hundred bucks and correct all the hard plastics. But if you can't, then I would just pay a little bit extra and just go for the EX. But all in all, really impressive SUV. Kia really knocked it out of the park. This feels no less impressive than the RAV4. It feels not, not as strong as the new turbocharged Nissan Rogue. But as far as space, it's more spacious and it feels like a more sporty platform. The Rogue feels a little bit soft compared to this car, but the Rogue also has more torque. So I guess it depends on what you're looking for. If you want the ultimate like bang for your buck in terms of off-road capability, interior features, this is it. If you want the stronger low-end torque engine and you don't really care about features as much, you just wanna be able to get out of your own way, get up to speed nice and quick, I'll go with the Rogue. But overall, this is still excellent. 
excellent of an SUV. I would definitely recommend anybody looking for a compact all-wheel drive base SUV to check this one out. Other than that though, huge thanks to Darius and the rest of the management and staff here at Regal Kia in Lakeland, Florida for making this review possible. Really nice SUV, beautiful dealership. I'll leave a link to their inventory below. And the inventory started to pick back up a little bit again. So I'll definitely recommend anybody looking for a new car to check out Regal Kia here in Lakeland, Florida and ask for Darius. Also, huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. I hope you enjoyed it half as much as I enjoyed making it. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know I have endless gratitude for all subscribers. You know, the channel is not possible without you and I really appreciate the constant support. Uh, but again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars or trucks you'd like to see reviewed in this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, thank you so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.